Now it's time for me to introduce the Ambux Resource Center, or ARC, team. First up is Tony Salvato, our warehouse mechanic. Some of you have had the pleasure of working with Tony and meeting him, and he's a wonderful guy to have as part of our team. Before moving to North Carolina, Tony lived in Connecticut with his parents and siblings. After two years of volunteering at the ARC, he officially joined the team in February 2010. That's right, we just recently celebrated his 10th anniversary. He loves to share his mechanically inclined talents and passion for the AMBUX mission. Tony takes great pride as a warehouse mechanic in knowing that what he does when he walks into the building every day is not only important, but necessary and helps Amtrak recipients experience a special milestone in their lives. You should see his face light up when he helps that rider on their maiden voyage, knowing that he helped assemble or repair that trike. In his downtime, Tony enjoys theme parks, especially Disney, tinkering, cooking, gardening, Halloween decorating, and giving away candy to trick-or-treaters. He also has a furry friend at home named Stitch. That's his beloved Yorkshire ter Terrier. I call Stitch a Yorkshire terrorist. Um, he can occasionally be seen wearing holiday sweaters, and he's very friendly to Tony, but beware, he's not always friendly to others. Next up, we have Sarah Zeller. Sarah was just recently hired, um, just before COVID hit, as our Director of Marketing and Membership Services. She joined us in February 2020, as you can see. She has a passion for charitable work, and she spent her entire professional career in the nonprofit world. She received her BA in Communication Studies with a Leadership Studies minor from the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Her Myers-Briggs personality type is ISTP, which means introverted, sensing, thinking, and perceiving. So she's practical, adaptable, empathetic, loves to learn new things, and values common sense. I wanna pause here to thank Sarah for all of her help in putting this virtual conference together. She enjoys technology, and that's a good thing. Broadway musicals, camping, con camping concerts, and her favorite band is Mumford & Sons. Sarah's Beagle Larson is named after Jonathan Larson, the brilliant mind and creator of the famed Broadway musical, Rent. She may or may not know every single word of that musical. Sarah's thrilled to be working with Ann Bucks in our pursuit to inspire mobility and independence. Contact Sarah if you have questions about Ambux marketing, including ambux.org, our website, social media, Ambux magazine, and the chapter marketing support. Next up, we have Rachel McCauley, who works with Sarah in marketing and membership services. Rachel joined us just a little while before Sarah in September of 2019. She's organized, tech savvy, and she holds a bachelor's degree in mass communications with a concentration in journalism and has over seven years experience in writing, marketing, branding, and customer service. The most enjoyable part of Rachel's job, she says, is connecting with people and continuing the Ambux mission. Outside work, Rachel enjoys creative writing, reading, dancing, when no one's looking, of course, she says, photography, binge watching her favorite TV shows, and playing video games. Her favorite quote is, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who you are not, who are you not to be, from Marianne Williams. Contact Rachel if you have questions about Ambux marketing, including ambux.org, our website, social media, Ambux magazine, and chapter marketing support and membership services, such as changes in chapter rosters and adding or dropping members. Next up, we have a familiar face to most of, most of you. Janice Blankenship, our membership services coordinator, began working for National Ambux in September 2000. And her not that's right, she's celebrating 20 years at this point. And her knowledge of everything Ambux is invaluable to her colleagues. Janice's expertise lies in bookkeeping and accounting, and she brings that and so much more to our organization. She has three adult children, Charlotte, Melissa, and Mike, and is an amazing dog mom to her precious new pup, Sky. 
She describes herself as loving, trusting, a little bit shy. Something you likely don't know about Janice is that she was a clarinet player from third grade until she graduated in high school. In her downtime, she loves to cross stitch. Janice said the most rewarding part about working at Ambux is seeing the happiness on a child's face as when riding their bikes for the first time and seeing the members giving their time and volunteering hours for our mission. They open their hearts to help. Contact Janice for questions about our Big Hat Club, friends and member information changes, chapter rosters, and gift acknowledgements. Many of you have described to me um, in talking with Janice, you've talked about her having the most sweet Southern voice you've ever heard in, in your life. And that's a sweet person behind that voice too. And we're so happy that Janice is still part of our team and we haven't let her retire just yet. Next up is Alyssa Magalski, our Charitable Programs Coordinator. Alyssa began working at Ambux in August of 2017. She was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio and received her BA in Integrated Strategic Communications and a communications minor from the University of Kentucky. Alyssa is also a Nonprofit Leadership Alliance certified nonprofit professional. Alyssa moved to North Carolina when her husband Dylan was in medical school. Her desire to make a difference and help others make her an asset to our team. Alyssa says the most rewarding part about working for Ambux is giving away Amtrikes. She's responsible for our national wish list as well as our scholarship program. Watching a child or an adult ride for the first time is one of the coolest things to experience, she said. Alyssa has two Labrador retrievers, a yellow lab named Bronson and a black lab named Nella. In her spare time, she's a beekeeper and she enjoys gardening. Contact Alyssa when you have questions about the National Amtrak Wish List, evaluation sites, or the Ambuck Scholarships for Therapists program. Now I'd like to introduce Maria Austin, though many of you have talked with Maria if you've ordered Amtrikes or called with questions about Amtrikes. Maria began working for Ambux in August 2018 as our customer service coordinator. She attended Guilford Technical Community College and Everest University Online and has many years of administrative, clerical, and customer service experience. Her professional skills include patience, communication, and attention to detail. For her, the most pleasing part about working for Ambux is enjoying the feeling of making a difference and the impact she can have on people. She was born and raised in Greensboro, North Carolina, and can be described as loyal, loyal, empathetic, and real. When Maria was young, she wanted to be an author, so it's fitting that her favorite quote is by Maya Angelou. We delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes that it has gone through to achieve that beauty. Maria is driven by her personal values of love, truth, and compassion, and her hobbies include cooking, reading, gardening, and watching movies. Contact Maria for all customer service needs, including Amtrike and Ambuck store orders, invoices, returns, and store accounts, payables, and receivables. Now there's a new face who was recently hired to help out Maria, and, and that was sorely needed for our organization as well as for, for Maria's sanity. This is Stephen Vinson, our new Amtrak customer service representative. When Stephen was a kid, he was born and raised in Lexington, North Carolina, by the way, he dreamt of being a doctor when he grew up. Today, his desire is to help and ensure the happiness of others, and that's been manifested into a seven year long career in customer service. Since starting his position as a customer service representative at National Ambux in August of 2020, Stephen has been most inspired by the smiles on children's faces once they're strapped onto their Amtrikes. He describes himself as a dependable, loyal, and loving person whose strengths lie in being creative and being a quick learner. In his free time, Stephen enjoys singing, playing the drums, and hanging out with friends and family. His favorite quote is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Contact Stephen with customer service needs, including Amtrak and Ambuck store orders, invoices, returns, payables, and receivables, much like Maria, but he's still learning the ropes right now. We're really happy to have Stephen on our team. The next person probably needs no introduction to any of you. Um, many times I've, I've spoken about her commitment to this organization and 
the capacity to just answer any question. And if she can't, if she doesn't have the answer, she'll find the answer. Um, I describe her as a Jill of all trades and invaluable to the AMBUCS mission. Jessica Wall, our Chief Operations Officer. Jessica is a self proclaimed cool nonprofit nerd. She began her AMBUCS journey in February 2014. She obtained her BA in journalism and mass communications in English and an MS in mass communications from South Dakota State University and worked in higher education before coming to, Amb to AMBUCS. Jessica has an 11 year old Cardigan Welsh Corgi named Cairo and a nine year old Tabby named Tookie. While she has an impressive Stephen King collection, The Power of One by Bryce Courtney is her favorite book. A unique fact about Jessica is that she celebrates International Women's Day annually by collecting, purchasing, and donating sanitary products for those in need. At Ambux, I've been fortunate to grow, not only as a professional, but as a human, she says. Our volunteers are extraordinary. Knowing them is the opportunity to see the best parts of humanity in action, she says. Contact Jessica if you have questions about chapter funding or grants, all major donation functions, national and named scholarships, the Veterans Initiative, chapter building, or scorecard or blue chip questions. Again, I can't tell you how valuable this, this young woman is to our organizational mission. And when you have the opportunity, thank her for what she does. Um, I think I'll turn this next introduction over to Jessica because it might be just a little bit awkward for me. Thank you so much. I like to say that our staff has to embody shoulders together because we are just too small not to do that and still get all of the jobs done. And that's got to start from the top down and that's exactly how it goes. Here's a guy who will paint walls and hang plexiglass and unload 40 foot containers in 90 degree weather. Jay Lawrence, Chief Executive Officer. I like to call him the Big Cheese. <laughs> the nonprofit bug clearly got a hold of our fearless leader very early. He spent more than 20 years in the nonprofit management, predominantly working with children and adults with special needs. He joined AMBUX in January 2017. Jay has his certificate in nonprofit management from Duke University and his MA and special education from Lenore Ryan University. Outside of work, he enjoys fitness, creativity, writing, acoustic guitar, and home repair. Jay has four children, Drew, Matt, Ashley, and Harley. Life is like a bicycle. To keep your balance, you have to keep pedaling and moving forward. That's his favorite quote. Jay strongly believes in the Ambux mission as, as, and is inspired by knowing he plays a small role in helping our dedicated volunteer members accomplish that mission. Personally, the values that guide him are determination, integrity, compassion, vulnerability, curiosity, and creativity. Jay is always happy to hear exciting news from our members across the country, but also don't hesitate to call or email him if you have executive level questions or ideas or unresolved concerns in any facet of our programs and services. Thanks so much for doing a great job, Jay. This rounds out the Ambux Resource Center staff. Well, here we are back where we started at ABC Park. Under my feet is the old countryman field, the softball park. And this is the new Miracle League field. Built by Mountain Metro Ambux, the Ambux chapters of Lawton, and many other contributors. I am about at third base. Over to my north is the stands, not grandstands, just stands. And on the back was a hill that has eroded over time. I climbed it every day at the ballpark. South of me is the baseball park, named for my father, Vic Menendez, at Menendez Field. I played as a kid, did maintenance, and played in the game here at American Business Club Fields. Then when my father-in-law said, here, sign this, I became a lot in Ambuck. After a year, I ran the ballpark. I was where I was supposed to be. Our conference in Pittsburgh was a great time. We sent out links so you could see where we were and what to do. A lot of you showed up early to visit the surrounding areas. It was a fun trip. At conference, we laughed, we clapped, 
when awards were given away and we shed tears at some of the Amtrak's being given away. We left there ready to change the world. When we left, you all for the next three months gave a lot of Amtrak's out. Christmas was happy for a lot of people and a lot of smiles were had by all. When January started, the ARC started to change the software, which was old and not very friendly. Also, the Amtrak warehouse was moved to BCA. It took a while to load the inventory and send it to the BCA, but it was accomplished. After several setbacks, finally BCA was up and running. We are still working on the software update, but it is coming along. When finished, chapters will be able to update their own chapter membership roster. So while those two things were started, they were still be ongoing. Last year, two committees were started and were finished this year. The bylaw committee, chaired by Scott Buckaloo, led a group of volunteers to change the update and update them, and the National Board has finally approved them. Also, Donna Carlton Fish chaired the Region Conference Manual Committee, which was out of date. She led another group of people to update, add useful tools for putting together a Region Conference, and I want to thank them for their committees to bring these to a close. I also appointed Rick Kerr to chair a committee to assess the different regions and look at aligning them and give representation to all chapters. That committee has worked hard and I am sure they will come to the board with a great recommendation in the not so far future. This year has been like no other. When the COVID-19 hit, almost all chapters have lost major fundraisings. Region meetings were canceled, local chapters were stopped, and time stood still. Well, hopefully the clock is started to tick. Chapters are meeting with social distancing and by Zoom. But most are meeting. You have started to plan for the future and running projects and coming up with new ways to run your projects because we are AMBUCs. We are volunteers. We weren't off. We were AMBUCs were essential workers. Our members have been working hard to build ramps like Selena Branfus Bantets with safety and social distancing. Amarillo interviewed scholarship hopefuls by Zoom and Amtrak's were given out by Music City and many more. We were where we were supposed to be. Put me in coach, I'm ready to play, was the theme I started in Pittsburgh. The idea is that we as a team are working together to make our mission complete, inspiring mobility and independence. That's what we're about. And we do this helping each other, shoulders together. As the new leadership takes their place, to lead this organization, make sure you say, put me in coach so we can get more leaders to help further our mission. I want to thank my chapter, Great Plains, for always being there, helping me achieve my goals. And there's also many individuals. I want to thank my parents, my sister, my wife, and everyone that helped put me in this position to be a leader of this great organization. My wife and friends were there at times, helped me stay on the straight and narrow. I thank you for your opportunity, but I'm not done. I am ready to serve with Sue Haywood. Hang on, we're going to go on another ride. So in final, we still have more innings to play, a lot of game left. It's time for you to put on your cleats, stay safe, step up to the plate, and take a swing. Are you ready to play? It's a great day to be an Ambuck. Maybe it's true what they say. A picture is worth a thousand words. But what if a photo personifies just one powerful word? What if that word is exactly what we need right now, amidst the chaos of a global pandemic, economic hardship, racial strife, and more recently, natural disasters? Can't imagine a more timely photo than this one. It simultaneously touches on the current turmoil of our nation and world, and yet captures the healing force we desperately need to help, to help us to move forward. Grace. 
Yes, there it is, that singularly significant word with a multitude of meanings. An act of kindness or compassion, courteous goodwill, gifted mercy, and finally, a free blessing. Examine the photo more closely. The child's face is partially covered, but the mask cannot begin to contain her smile. Just look at the sparkle in her eyes. Because we recognize the shiny red helmet, we know her joy comes from the fact that she's seated on her very own Amtrite. You can feel her excitement as she begins her maiden voyage on a magic carpet ride to fun and freedom like she's never experienced before. Take another look at the hands holding the helmet. Those are the hands of physical therapy assistant Tiffany Brantley of Lawton, Oklahoma. Somehow, this simple still photo captures the undeniable tenderness with which Tiffany is placing the helmet on the rider's head. Clearly, this child matters to Tiffany. Just as importantly, this child matters to the members of the Lawton Ambucks chapter, who gave her this incredible gift to inspire her mobility and independence. A demonstration of grace, an act of kindness or compassion. In this companion photo, the supporting cast again includes Tiffany, along with mask man, past national president, Rick Kerr. Note their posture, one bending, the other kneeling. To paraphrase the words of the immortal Abraham Lincoln, no one has ever stood so tall as when they stooped to help a child. The actions captured in this photo are again an embodiment of grace or courteous goodwill. The same can be said for Lawton Ambuck's chapter president, Chad Fetzer, who was also present that day, but is invisible because he took both photos. Like so many of you, Chad was unselfishly working behind the scenes to capture this beautiful moment. The fourth person in the group is Angela Parker Richardson, proud mother of the new Amtrak rider. A few weeks after both photos were taken, I reached out to Angela. Here's what she had to say about the gift of an Amtrak and the impact in the life of her child. It gives her a sense of independence. When she wants to ride, she simply points and says, bike. She absolutely loves maneuvering around our neighborhood and the local park. It has been such a blessing. There it is, proof of the last definition of grace listed above, a free blessing. Of course, all of us who have had the pleasure of gifting an Amtrak know it's a blessing that goes both ways. I've heard so many of you say, I get more out of seeing the joy of the recipients and family members than I could ever give. In sharing this blessing, it seems we are blessed tenfold, exponential grace. That reminds me, you've heard many names in this picture, all the key players who made this moment possible in the life of a child. There's just one more important name you should know. It's the child's name in the photo. Her name is Grace. And that's amazing. Keep doing what you do. Our world needs it. Well, let me go ahead and take the opportunity to echo my gratitude as well. 100%. We could not do this without you. So let's go ahead and take a look at you. Here's the membership data for 2020. 
We're sitting at 161 chapters, and that's 3,739 active members. The average chapter size is about 23 active members right now. Our young people sitting at 73 members. We have three youth auxiliary chapters across the country, always looking to grow more. And of course, that is our young people who come from high school and colleges, but are also affiliated with a parent chapter. Our unaffiliated life members, 728 members, friends have dropped down to 82. Add that all up and we're sitting at just over 4,500 and bucks. Since last year's conference, we have added six new chapters and they are Red River Chapter in Fargo, North Dakota, VC Trekkers Chapter in Ventura, California, also in the SoCal area, the San Diego Super Speedsters in San Diego, California, the Metro East Illinois Wishing Wheels Chapter in Fairview Heights, Illinois, over to the Northeast, Steel City Cyclers in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Emerald Coast Chapter, that just sounds somewhere that I wanna be right now. <laughs> They're in Panama City Beach, Florida. And then the other two that I skipped over, that's because we welcomed them last year just before conference, but they were technically chartered in this Ambux year. That's the Iroquois County Chapter and then Greater Irving, Las Colinas. So excited to start these new groups, especially in this crazy COVID world. They've taken the opportunity to want to impact their communities in a big way, and we welcome you guys. Speaking of COVID, here's some important dates that have not been adjusted in response to this pandemic. We did have a lot of our membership deadlines especially change this year um, because of some of the limitations that come around because of COVID. We can't control the IRS though. They are sticking firm to that October 15th deadline if your chapter observes the, the fiscal year June 1 to May 31. We ask that you fill out the 135-136 annual and charitable giving report just after you complete your taxes. So if you are doing the June 1 to May 31 filing, um, please go ahead and fill out your charitable giving report. That helps us do our taxes when we report on our chapters. All other membership dates and deadlines, we're back on track, friends. Scorecard, updating your chapter rosters, doing dues billing, fall branding, all of those dates are staying the same as of right now. Typically, I would jump to scholarship right now. However, after the break, uh, Larry Terilli, the chair of the Scholarships for Therapists Committee, he's going to be bringing you an update and giving you all those important facts and figures. And you know, you're definitely going to stick around for that. A lot of good stuff to hear. So let's talk about the permanent fund. Uh, the fund balance as of our last completed quarter was sitting at $3.382 million. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of money. Can that help support the operation? No, it cannot. This is for our charitable programs. These are part of our endowments, our investments from our donors who want to support the scholarship program, uh, the Amtrak or Wishlist program, and then, of course, Cornerstone, building those new chapters. So that money is off hands unless it's going to be spent for charitable purposes. And we take an average three-year return and this most recent program, we pulled $124,518.75 to share that with the Scholarships for Therapists program as well as the Amtrak program. Okay, so I've been getting this question a lot this time of year because a lot of you have been recognizing your outgoing and incoming chapter officers. So I wanted to cover this briefly. How can you buy plaques? You technically don't buy them through us anymore. However, we're happy to point you in the right direction. Um, this was to help save you guys some money. So if we go get the engraving done and then we get it shipped to us and then we got to ship it to you, the, the price tag starts to go up. You can, of course, um, seek engraving services through local companies, if that's something that you want to do. They are going to charge you an art setup fee. We've already done that for you, though, at Crown Trophy. It's really easy to shop through them. If you go to the ambux.org website, 
go to the members section and you see here on the left uh, I show in the navigation screen you'll want to go down to Ambuck store that's going to take you to a page that looks like number two up here at the top and it says here's a gallery of options with pricing you can click on that and it's going to take you to a, a an information sheet to show you all of the things that crown trophy has available for you to purchase the different plaques gavels they've got the name badges and they're really fast super easy to work with their contact information is there but you can also find it with the gallery options on the inbox.org website there's a few other things though that you still need to get from us and we do this because of cost saving measures um, most lapel pins have a minimum order quantity that you're just not going to be able to buy at a chapter level so we do that so we still offer your officer pins both the current officers and your past officers new to the lineup we are often offering the vice president and the past vice president pin uh, that used to not be available so you can get both present and past for president vice president treasurer and secretary we also offer your uh, your your belt banners so that you can proudly display your patches that you win from this conference, past conferences, or even future conferences. Most of your Ambux materials can be purchased on the Amtrak.store website. That's AmtrakStore.org. If you go to the navigation on the left side of the screen, all the way down, you'll see Ambux Store and you'll see these items available to you. Of course, you're welcome to call our office if you run into any questions along the way. So I brought up your conference awards. Let's get into a little more detail there. If you've ever been to the Great Plains, uh, one of their formal meetings, the region gatherings, it's a, a just quite lovely display of all of their banners. They proudly display those patches. It is a just gorgeous display of chapter history. History in the making, your past, your present, and then of course when you add to it, your future. So you are able to earn patches through conference, but also if you are a superior chapter president, you can get a superior chapter president watch. And we've got plaques of course along the way for our donor recognition. So Jessica, how are we gonna get our awards this year? Why'd you ask? We are going to go out to all of those who have received awards and get you to fill out this form for us. We want to be sure to not only get you those awards as quickly as we can, but we also want to be sure we're sending them to the correct place. So on the form, if you choose that you want to order all of your awards or you want to choose some of the options maybe your superior president has already gotten a watch and says you know what i just don't want another one you are able to choose which of the awards that you want and then those options will default so that you can give us a shipping address and we'll make sure to get those to you as soon as we can we do ask for your patience because we'll have to collect all of these forms and get some of those orders placed and try to get them out as quickly as possible so for those of you who aren't interested in your in getting the awards or maybe you only want some of the awards like maybe your president doesn't want another watch you can choose instead of awards send me an Amtrak coupon code for their value and we will happily do that for you um, and then of course there's the option where you can just say I don't really understand all of this or I want to know exactly what we got, give me a call and we're going to do that for you. So again, this form is going to go out to you guys after conference. If you received any sort of award or recognition, we're going to get that to you so that we can make sure we get you your awards in a timely fashion and get them exactly to where you want them to go to the moment you've been waiting for Amtrak updates I'm going to pass it back over to CEO Jay Lawrence and he's going to take us through those thank you guys
Hello. Now I'd like to share Amtrak news. 2020 has been an unusual year, a challenging year for all of us as individuals, families, and certainly for this organization. The impact of COVID-19 is undeniable and unavoidable. Thankfully, all of you who are volunteers with AMBUCS, you have two things in abundance, passion and patience. And those will continue to be tested as our Amtrak program navigates over, around, and through the ever-changing challenges of today. Due to the fluidity of these challenges, the updates below may quickly become dated. What's true today may not be true tomorrow. Please stay up to date by visiting ambux.org slash mission in motion and the National Ambux Facebook page. If you still have questions, don't hesitate to call or email me, CEO Jay Lawrence, at 800-838-1845, extension 123, or Jay Lawrence at ambucks.org. We've got some recent questions that we've heard from our members regarding the Amtrak program, and we wanted to make an effort to answer all of those questions today. The first one, what's the status of back-ordered Pro Series Amtraks? It's a very good question. We'll receive several hundred Pro Series Amtraks, and that's models 1412, 1416, 1420, and also 1420XL, in early October. Um, a shipment is due to hit Charleston, South Carolina on October 2nd, which should mean it should be at the BCA warehouse by the first week of October, maybe the 5th or 6th of October. Then we'll have another shipment, in fact, two shipments coming from Taiwan that should arrive in early November in South Carolina. So this will help us fill back orders on those models and also help us fill orders for Christmas. Should Ambux chapters continue to order Amtrak models, even those that are currently out of stock? The answer to that is an absolute yes. We encourage all chapters to continue ordering these models. Um, that helps us to ensure that you'll be closer to the front of the line when we do receive those trikes, but it also helps because by ordering, you help us forecast inventory needs going forward. Simply put, with your help, we'll know what to buy. Aside from Pro Series Amtrikes, are other models in stock? Absolutely. We have an ample supply of all other models. That's 1410, AM10, AM12 small, AM12, AM16, 1020 10, 10, 10, 10, and 1024, the JT2000 and JT2300, and the TP3000. Grant funds are available to chapters to be used for the purchase of up to five Amtrikes for veteran recipients. Chapters are responsible only for the cost of shipping. At the end of this report, you'll see a video with more details about this, this VET initiative. Many chapters are already taking advantage of this, and, and we hope if you haven't, you'll do so soon and help the veterans in your community. All chapters will soon receive word about another initiative to provide more early intervention Amtrikes. 1410, AM10, AM12 small, and AM12 to recipients. In fact, you'll hear some about that in this, in this presentation today, very, very soon. Why do we continue to struggle with backorder issues? Well, the simple answer is that our backorder issues are due to unavoidable, unavoidable cash flow and supply chain issues related specifically to COVID-19. First, let's look at cash flow. Our current supplier, Gomir in Taiwan, does not ship Amtrikes to us until we complete a wire transfer to pay for them. Therefore, hundreds of back-ordered Amtrike models, which were Pro Series trikes and were ordered months ago, could not be shipped to us from Taiwan because we couldn't make payment at that time. Amtrike sales for the first half of the year had dropped $500,000 due to chapters being, able, being forced to cancel fundraising events and things of that nature in the face of COVID-19. Um, simply put, you were struggling and, and we were struggling. Supply chain issues. Before COVID-19, the typical timeline after ordering Amtrak's from Gomir in Taiwan typically went like this. Day one, a purchase order for 250 to 400 Amtrak's, totaling anywhere from $150,000 to $300,000, 
various models is submitted to GoMeter. Uh, it, it might be worth noting that our minimum order quantity or MOQ for each model is 50. 80 to 90 days after that, GoMeer would have secured all the parts and accessories they need uh, from sub suppliers in Taiwan and mainland China to manufacture the Amtrak's in our order. Then another 20 to 40 days later, GoMeer would complete the manufacturing process and package our Amtrak's for shipping to the US. Another 80, 180 to 270 days later, our shipment of Amtrak's arrives in Charleston, South Carolina. Two to five days later, that shipment gets to the BCA warehouse in Somerton, South Carolina, where it's unloaded and brought into inventory. An additional one to two days later, Amtrak's can be shipped to chapters, at which point chapters are invoiced. So the total time elapsed historically, and this was before COVID-19, would be about 284 to 408 days from the time that we ordered from GOMIR to the time that we could ship to you as chapters. Since COVID-19, that total time elapsed has been increased to somewhere in the neighborhood of 464 to 588 days. As you can see, that's more than a year. Obviously, uh, an understandable question there is why such a drastic increase? As you may have noticed, in the midst of COVID-19, the bike business is absolutely booming. There's a picture here of a rack in Walmart with very few bikes on it. Everyone's wanting to get out of the house and ride. And that's a great thing, but the industry wasn't prepared for this huge spike in demand. From big retailers like Walmart, Target, and Dick's to small bike shops, nobody can keep up with, with the demand. They can't keep bikes in stock. Likewise, manufacturers can't build bikes fast enough and are struggling to secure parts and accessories because the manufacturers of those items also can't meet the demand. Look at this headline that came from June 2020, COVID-19 documenting the first chapter of the new bike boom, bikes are the new toilet paper. That's talking about how the demand for bikes exploded and that was in June of 2020 and here we are in September. If large bike manufacturers who buy in high volume can't get parts, just imagine how difficult it is for smaller players like Gomir and Amtrak. The 80 to 90 days it used to take Gomir to secure parts and accessories needed to manufacture our trikes is now stretched to 140 to 150 days. As we stressed at the beginning of this update, patient, uh, patience and passion are virtues. Some of you have asked if it would help the Amtrak program if you made prepayment on your chapter's Amtrak accounts. We've never invoiced chapters until we've shipped Amtrak's to you. That will continue to be standard operating procedure. Recently though, three chapters, Decatur Lincoln Land, Ponca City Charity Angels, and Kalamazoo offered to prepay sizable amounts of their chapter to their chapter Amtrak accounts. They essentially set up credit balances that could be spent down. Since the funds allocated by the chapter for Amtrak's had already been approved by their membership, they felt the prepayment would help with our cash flow at the national level and enable us to purchase Amtrak's more quickly. We thank these chapters for that forward thinking and their generosity. And prepayment is an option, but we also know that many chapters are not in a financial position to prepay. If your chapter is interested in doing so, please understand that prepayment doesn't eliminate the possibility of back orders on some items. What's the latest news in the transition to our partnership with BCA, Bicycle Corporation of America? There's a picture to, your, to the right on the slide. Our entire Amtrak inventory, with the exception of a few pieces and parts, has been transferred to BCA's warehouse in Somerton, South Carolina. That's just eight miles from BCA's factory in Manning, South Carolina. Though all Amtrak orders are still processed through Amtrak customer service in High Point, North Carolina, the orders are filled and shipped from the Somerton, South Carolina location. Is BCA manufacturing Amtrak's yet? The answer to that, unfortunately, is no. BCA has not yet begun manufacturing Amtrak's, but development of our new BCA Pro Series prototypes are now, it's back on track after unavoidable delays related to COVID-19. We hope to have production-ready prototypes for the Amtrak Advisory Board to review by late fall. 
BCA will not begin manufacturing these trikes until the Amtrak Advisory Board has given its final approval. The prototypes must meet the safety and design specs to address the complex and diverse needs of our Amtrak riders. Why was development of our BCA prototypes delayed? Well, in January, long before COVID-19 reached our shores, factories in China shut down. Their work was brought to a screeching halt, as was the work on our prototypes. Though BCA will be, will be assembling Amtrak's in South Carolina, their team is working with experienced engineers in China on the designs and tooling for the prototypes. When Chinese factories reopened, their priority was large-scale manufacturing to fill orders that accumulated during the shutdown. So new product development, not just for Amtrak's, but new products, period, became a back burner issue for manufacturers. Please remember, though, the ultimate goal is our BCA Amtrak's to bear the Made in USA label. They'll initially be, be labeled assembled in USA with domestic and foreign parts. We do have new customized Amtrak helmets from Kent International, the parent company of BCA. These new helmets come in the following industry standard sizes, and they're slightly different from our previous helmets. We will now have four sizes, toddler, child, youth, and adult. And note that toddler is the same as extra small, child is the same as small, youth is large, and adult is extra large. You can see the ranges there for the sizes, and there's some overlap in those sizes as you move up. All helmets come with an, addition, an additional chin strap extender, 10 vents to keep riders' heads cool, and the uh, core of the helmet is made of black EPS, or expanded polystyrene foam. And that construction provides a sportier look, and it hides dirt and stains better than our white foam uh, on, on the previous helmets. Youth and adult helmets have a dial to increase or reduce the size also. We're very pleased with the way these helmets turned out. And, uh, we look forward, if you haven't already received them, we look forward to you receiving those with the trikes you've ordered. Has there been an increase in the number of Amtrak's that are damaged in transit? If so, how is this being addressed? Unfortunately, yes, that is the case. And I'm not sure how well you can see this photo, but that's um, evidence of a damaged trike that happened in shipping. And we have seen an uptick in the number of trikes that have been damaged. Of particular concern are the larger models, JT2300, JT2000, 1024, 1020, and 1420XL. This problem is also at least partially attributable to COVID-19, believe it or not. We've had numerous conversations with our FedEx rep about this issue, and he reports that since the virus hit, FedEx has been running at peak Christmas-like volume, as he called it, for several months. They've hired 45,000 new employees in a very short time. A significant increase in volume plus inexperienced handlers and drivers is frankly a formula for damaged goods. What we're doing to remedy this, uh, we wanna share with you today. Um, with assistance from FedEx, we're purchasing an electric band for larger trike cartons with plastic straps prior to shipping. We'll also begin using cardboard trays on the tops and bottoms of the larger cartons before they're reinforced with the band and the straps. We hope these measures will address this issue, but please continue to notify us immediately if you receive a damaged Amtrak. Why is it sometimes difficult to get in touch with Amtrak customer service when we have a question or a problem? Well, COVID-19 hit not long after we hired an employee through a temp agency and trained them to assist Amtrak customer service. Due to cash, cash flow issues triggered by COVID-19, as previously detailed, we had to end the employment of that individual in March. And this took us back down to one customer service rep, Maria Austin, who you see in the picture there. Um, she's understandably been overwhelmed, but we're happy to report, and you heard this earlier in the staff introductions, that we were recently able to hire a second Amtrak customer service representative. So um, we hope you'll see a significant improvement in that area. So what about missing parts? We've had reports of that happening. 
some of that does happen um, due to errors at the factory level uh, with GoMeer in Taiwan, but many of those errors are directly due to mistakes that we or BCA has made. We apologize for that. The worst thing is for you to be delayed in assembling a trike or giving that trike to a child or an adult because you're missing what you need to complete the assembly. We apologize for those mistakes. Like the ARC, BCA all ex also experienced some effects of, of COVID-19 and they were short staffed. During a critical point in their Amtrak training, BCA was forced to shut down operations. Uh, they had an employee, in fact, more than one employee who contracted COVID. They initially reopened with very limited staffing. They had one person working in the warehouse. And when I say one person, that individual was handling Amtrak orders. He was the only forklift driver. He was the only one allowed at one time in that building. Many employees couldn't return because they lacked childcare. Their children were not allowed to go to school because of COVID at that point. So BCA ended up being forced to fill holes even when they reopened with temporary employees who were at a huge disadvantage. Um, as most of you can imagine, customizing Amtrak orders is not a simple intuitive process. Um, it's, it's been very challenging to train from afar also, to train from North Carolina when they're in South Carolina. We've made several trips down in spite of um, COVID-19 restrictions but uh, that challenging is that that training is challenging. We've also developed photo diagrams like the one at the right to show the package contents that come in a particular trike carton. The blue squares and rectangles there represent the items that are in that box that's adjacent to the square or rectangle. Uh, this way, the folks in BCA who are filling orders when they do exchanges or swap outs they know what comes in that trike originally and what is supposed to go in there in terms of the exchange. That's not always easy to see when you open the top of a box and you're digging down in it two or three feet head first. Um, so we hope this will remedy some of the issues we've had there with mistakes. Is it safe right now to provide Amtrikes during this pandemic? That's a very good question. And the answer is absolutely. Um, now more than ever, Amtrak's are needed by the children and adults that we serve. COVID-19 has forced the closure of schools, recreation centers, and even some therapy clinics. Many community-based recreation programs like Miracle League Baseball, Adaptive Summer Programs, and Therapeutic Horseback Riding, they've been canceled. Even with some areas of the country reopening, these programs largely remain closed or limited due to the high-risk population they serve. This has left our target population without a safe way to be physically active. It's also limited their social interactions. Amtrak's provide an opportunity for riders to get moving in the fresh air. The CDC currently recommends exercising outdoors and bike riding has seen a resurgence across the country as we talked about earlier. Families and individuals everywhere are riding. So let's come together and make sure everyone who wants to ride is given that chance. How do we safely give away Amtrak's? While the safety of our Amtrak riders has always been paramount, COVID-19 has necessitated that we take additional safety precautions. Ashley Schilling, DPT, who is our AEFT coordinator, and that stands for Amtrak Evaluation and Fitting for Therapists, and she's also president of the Music City Trikes chapter in Nashville, Tennessee, She's recently compiled COVID-19 information from the CDC, the World Health Organization, the EPA, and multiple therapists affiliated with AMBUX, including Sue Haywood, Amy Carter, and Denise Nettiberg. This information was used to develop safe practices for Amtrak evaluation, assembly, and delivery. For a complete list of those guidelines, please go to ambux.org slash mission in motion. Now stay tuned for a video about the VET initiative. Hello, now I'd like to share Amtrak news. 2020 has been an unusual year, a challenging year for all of us as individuals, families, and certainly for this organization. The impact of COVID-19 is undeniable and unavoidable. Thankfully, all of you who are volunteers with Ambux, you have two things in abundance, passion, 
and patients. And those will continue to be tested as our Amtrak program navigates over, around, and through the ever-changing challenges of today. Due to the fluidity of these challenges, the updates below may quickly become dated. What's true today may not be true tomorrow. Please stay up to date by visiting ambux.org slash mission in motion and the National Ambux Facebook page. If you still have questions, don't hesitate to call or email me, CEO Jay Lawrence, at 800-838-1845, extension 123, or jlawrence at ambux.org. We've got some recent questions that we've heard from our members regarding the Amtrak program, and we wanted to make an effort to answer all of those questions today. The first one, what's the status of back-ordered Pro Series Amtraks? It's a very good question. We'll receive several hundred Pro Series Amtraks, and that's models 1412, 1416, 1420, and also 1420XL in early October. Um, a shipment is due to hit Charleston, South Carolina on October 2nd, which should mean it should be at the BCA warehouse by the first week of October, maybe the 5th or 6th of October. Then we'll have another shipment, in fact, two shipments coming from Taiwan that should arrive in early November in South Carolina. So this will help us fill back orders on those models and also help us fill orders for Christmas. Should Ambux chapters continue to order Amtrak models, even those that are currently out of stock? The answer to that is an absolute yes. We encourage all chapters to continue ordering these models. Um, that helps us to ensure that you'll be closer to the front of the line when we do receive those trikes, but it also helps because by ordering, you help us forecast inventory needs going forward. Simply put, with your help, we'll know what to buy. Aside from Pro Series Amtrikes, are other models in stock? Absolutely. We have an ample supply of all other models. That's 1410, AM10, AM12 small, AM12, AM16, 1020 and 1024, the JT2000 and JT2300, and the TP3000. Grant funds are available to chapters to be used for the purchase of up to five Amtrikes for veteran recipients. Chapters are responsible only for the cost of shipping. At the end of this report, you'll see a video with more details about this, this VET initiative. Many chapters are already taking advantage of this, and, and we hope if you haven't, you'll do so soon and help the veterans in your community. All chapters will soon receive word about another initiative to provide more early intervention Amtrikes. 1410, AM10, AM12 small, and AM12 to recipients. In fact, you'll hear some about that in this, in this presentation today, very, very soon. Why do we continue to struggle with back order issues? Well, the simple answer is that our back order issues are due to unavoidable, unavoidable cash flow and supply chain issues related specifically to COVID-19. First, let's look at cash flow. Our current supplier, Gomir in Taiwan, does not ship Amtrak's to us until we complete a wire transfer to pay for them. Therefore, hundreds of back-ordered Amtrak models, which were Pro Series trikes and were ordered months ago, could not be shipped to us from Taiwan because we couldn't make payment at that time. Amtrak sales for the first half of the year had dropped $500,000 due to chapters being, able, being forced to cancel fundraising events and things of that nature in the face of COVID-19. Um, simply put, you were struggling and, and we were struggling. Supply chain issues. Before COVID-19, the typical timeline after ordering Amtrak's from Gomir in Taiwan typically went like this. Day one, a purchase order for 250 to 400 Amtrak's totaling anywhere from $150,000 to $300,000. Various models is submitted to go mere. Uh, it, it might be worth noting that our minimum order quantity or MOQ for each model is 50. 80 to 90 days after that, Gomir would have secured all the parts and accessories they need uh, from sub suppliers in Taiwan and mainland China to manufacture the Amtrak's in our order. Then another 20 to 40 days later, Gomir would complete the manufacturing process 
and package our Amtrax for shipping to the US. Another 80, 180 to 270 days later, our shipment of Amtrax arrives in Charleston, South Carolina. Two to five days later, that shipment gets to the BCA warehouse in Somerton, South Carolina, where it's unloaded and brought into inventory. An additional one to two days later, Amtrax can be shipped to chapters, at which point chapters are invoiced. So the total time elapsed historically, and this was before COVID-19, would be about 284 to 408 days from the time that we ordered from Gomir to the time that we could ship to you as chapters. Since COVID-19, that total time elapsed has been increased to somewhere in the neighborhood of 464 to 588 days. As you can see, that's more than a year. Obviously, uh, an understandable question there is why such a drastic increase? As you may have noticed in the midst of COVID-19, the bike business is absolutely booming. There's a picture here of a rack in Walmart with very few bikes on it. Everyone's wanting to get out of the house and ride. And that's a great thing, but the industry wasn't prepared for this huge spike in demand. From big retailers like Walmart, Target, and Dick's to small bike shops, nobody can keep up with, with the demand. They can't keep bikes in stock. Likewise, manufacturers can't build bikes fast enough and are struggling to secure parts and accessories because the manufacturers of those items also can't meet the demand. Look at this headline that came from June 2020, COVID-19, documenting the first chapter of the new bike boom. Bikes are the new toilet paper. That's talking about how the demand for bikes exploded, and that was in June of 2020, and here we are in September. If large bike manufacturers who buy in high volume can't get parts, just imagine how difficult it is for smaller players like Gomir and Amtrak. The 80 to 90 days it used to take Gomir to secure parts and accessories needed to manufacture our trikes is now stretched to 140 to 150 days. As we stressed at the beginning of this update, patient, uh, patience and passion are virtues. Some of you have asked if it would help the Amtrak program if you made prepayment on your chapter's Amtrak accounts. We've never invoiced chapters until we've shipped Amtrak's to you. That will continue to be standard operating procedure. Recently though, three chapters, Decatur Lincoln Land, Ponca City Charity Angels, and Kalamazoo offered to prepay sizable amounts of their chapter to their chapter Amtrak accounts. They essentially set up credit balances that could be spent down. Since the funds allocated by the chapter for Amtrak's had already been approved by their membership, they felt the prepayment would help with our cash flow at the national level and enable us to purchase Amtrak's more quickly. We thank these chapters for that forward thinking and their generosity. And prepayment is an option, but we also know that many chapters are not in a financial position to prepay. If your chapter is interested in doing so, please understand that prepayment doesn't eliminate the possibility of back orders on some items. What's the latest news in the transition to our partnership with BCA, Bicycle Corporation of America? There's a picture to, your, to the right on the slide. Our entire Amtrak inventory, with the exception of a few pieces and parts, has been transferred to BCA's warehouse in Somerton, South Carolina. That's just eight miles from BCA's factory in Manning, South Carolina. Though all Amtrak orders are still processed through Amtrak customer service in High Point, North Carolina, the orders are filled and shipped from the Somerton, South Carolina location. Is BCA manufacturing Amtrak's yet? The answer to that, unfortunately, is no. BCA has not yet begun manufacturing Amtrak's, but development of our new BCA Pro Series prototypes are now, it's back on track after unavoidable delays related to COVID-19. We hope to have production ready prototypes for the Amtrak Advisory Board to review by late fall. BCA will not begin manufacturing these trikes until the Amtrak Advisory Board has given its final approval. The prototypes must meet the safety and design specs to address the complex and diverse needs of our Amtrak riders. Why was development of our BCA prototypes delayed? Well, in January, long before COVID-19 reached our shores, factories in China shut down. 
their work was brought to a screeching halt, as was the work on our prototypes. Though BCA will be, will be assembling Amtrak's in South Carolina, their team is working with experienced engineers in China on the designs and tooling for the prototypes. When Chinese factories reopened, their priority was large-scale manufacturing to fill orders that accumulated during the shutdown. So new product development, not just for Amtrak's, but new products, period, became a back burner issue for manufacturers. Please remember, though, the ultimate goal is our BCA Amtrak's to bear the Made in USA label. They'll initially be, be labeled assembled in USA with domestic and foreign parts. We do have new customized Amtrak helmets from Kent International, the parent company of BCA. These new helmets come in the following industry standard sizes, and they're slightly different from our previous helmets. We will now have four sizes, toddler, child, youth, and adult. And note that toddler is the same as extra small, child is the same as small, youth is large, and adult is extra large. You can see the ranges there for the sizes, and there's some overlap in those sizes as you move up. All helmets come with an, addition, an additional chin strap extender, 10 vents to keep riders' heads cool, and the uh, core of the helmet is made of black EPS, or expanded polystyrene foam. And that construction provides a sportier look, and it hides dirt and stains better than our white foam uh, on, on the previous helmets. Youth and adult helmets have a dial to increase or reduce the size also. Uh, we're very pleased with the way these helmets turned out. And, uh, we look forward, if you haven't already received them, we look forward to you receiving those with the trikes you've ordered. Has there been an increase in the number of Amtrak's that are damaged in transit? If so, how is this being addressed? Unfortunately, yes, that is the case. And I'm not sure how well you can see this photo, but that's. Um, evidence of a damaged trike that happened in shipping. And we have seen an uptick in the number of trikes that have been damaged. Of particular concern are the larger models, JT2300, JT2000, 1024, 1020, and 1420XL. This problem is also at least partially attributable to COVID-19, believe it or not. We've had numerous conversations with our FedEx rep about this issue, and he reports that since the virus hit, FedEx has been running at peak Christmas-like volume, as he called it, for several months. They've hired 45,000 new employees in a very short time. A significant increase in volume plus inexperienced handlers and drivers is frankly a formula for damaged goods. What we're doing to remedy this, uh, we wanna share with you today. Um, with assistance from FedEx, we're purchasing an electric band for larger trike cartons with plastic straps prior to shipping. We'll also begin using cardboard trays on the tops and bottoms of the larger cartons before they're reinforced with the band and the straps. We hope these measures will address this issue, but please continue to notify us immediately if you receive a damaged Amtrike. Why is it sometimes difficult to get in touch with Amtrak customer service when we have a question or a problem? Well, COVID-19 hit not long after we hired an employee through a temp agency and trained them to assist Amtrak customer service. Due to cash, cash flow issues triggered by COVID-19, as previously detailed, we had to end the employment of that individual in March. And this took us back down to one customer service rep, Maria Austin, who you see in the picture there. Um, she's understandably been overwhelmed, but we're happy to report, and you heard this earlier in the staff introductions, that we were recently able to hire a second Amtrak customer service representative. So um, we hope you'll see a significant improvement in that area. So what about missing parts? We've had reports of that happening. Some of that does happen um, due to errors at the factory level uh, with GoMir and Taiwan, but many of those errors are directly due to mistakes that we or BCA has made. We apologize for that. The worst thing is for you to be delayed in assembling a trike or giving that trike to a child or an adult because you're missing what you need to complete the assembly. We apologize for those mistakes. Like the ARC, BCA all exp also experienced some effects 
of, of COVID-19 and they were short staffed. During a critical point in their Amtrak training, VCA was forced to shut down operations. Uh, they had an employee, in fact, more than one employee who contracted COVID. They initially reopened with very limited staffing. They had one person working in the warehouse. And when I say one person, that individual was handling Amtrak orders. He was the only forklift driver. He was the only one allowed at one time in that building. Many employees couldn't return because they lacked childcare. Their children were not allowed to go to school because of COVID at that point. So BCA ended up being forced to fill holes even when they reopened with temporary employees who were at a huge disadvantage. Um, as most of you can imagine, customizing Amtrak orders is not a simple intuitive process. Um, it's, it's been very challenging to train from afar also, to train from North Carolina when they're in South Carolina. We've made several trips down in spite of um, COVID-19 restrictions, but uh, that challenging is, that, that training is challenging. We've also developed photo diagrams like the one at the right to show the package contents that come in a particular trike carton. The blue squares and rectangles there represent the items that are in that box that's adjacent to the square or rectangle. Uh, this way, the folks in BCA who are filling orders, when they do exchanges or swap outs, they know what comes in that trike originally and what is supposed to go in there in terms of the exchange. That's not always easy to see when you open the top of a box and you're digging down in it two or three feet head first. Um, so we hope this will remedy some of the issues we've had there with mistakes. Is it safe right now to provide Amtrak's during this pandemic? That's a very good question. And the answer is absolutely. Um, now more than ever, Amtrak's are needed by the children and adults that we serve. COVID-19 has forced the closure of schools, recreation centers, and even some therapy clinics. Many community-based recreation programs like Miracle League Baseball, adaptive summer programs, and therapeutic horseback riding, they've been canceled. Even with some areas of the country reopening, these programs largely remain closed or limited due to the high-risk population they serve. This has left our target population without a safe way to be physically active. It's also limited their social interactions. Amtrak's provide an opportunity for riders to get moving in the fresh air. The CDC currently recommends exercising outdoors and bike riding has seen a resurgence across the country as we talked about earlier. Families and individuals everywhere are riding. So let's come together and make sure everyone who wants to ride is given that chance. How do we safely give away Amtrak's? While the safety of our Amtrak riders has always been paramount, COVID-19 has necessitated that we take additional safety precautions. Ashley Schilling, DPT, who is our a AEFT coordinator, and that stands for Amtrak Evaluation and Fitting for Therapists, and she's also president of the Music City Trikes chapter in Nashville, Tennessee, She's recently compiled COVID-19 information from the CDC, the World Health Organization, the EPA, and multiple therapists affiliated with AMBUX, including Sue Haywood, Amy Carter, and Denise Nettiber. This information was used to develop safe practices for Amtrak evaluation, assembly, and delivery. For a complete list of those guidelines, please go to ambux.org slash mission in motion. Now stay tuned for a video about the VET initiative 